It's Friday. Are you ready to rumble? Joining me for tonight's Big Picture Rumble are Austin Peterson, Director of Production at FreedomWorks, S.E. Robinson, direct, uh, Deputy Director of the Paul Revere Project, and Sam Sachs, Progressive Writer and Commentator. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks. And international superstar, television superstar. Okay. <laughs> okay. So much for Mitt Romney's debate bump. New jobs numbers released today show the economy added 114,000 jobs in September. The Department of Labor also said the economy added 86,000 more jobs than previously estimated in July and August. Most promising for President Obama's reelection hopes the unemployment rate dropped from 8.1 percent down to 7.8 percent, the lowest it's been since President took office since President Obama took office in January of 2009. Number of unemployed Americans now at 12.1 million is also at its lowest level since January of 2009. So cue the Republican conspiracy theory. You're below 8%. So, so to the politics on this now, that's where some of the mistrust comes in. Oh, how convenient that the rate drops below 8% for the first time in 43 months, five weeks before an election. That's why there's some dis mistrust of these numbers. Along with so is anyone on our panel a, a jobs truther? You don't uh, trust the numbers? Uh, well, I, I, I'm apt to believe uh, what Barack Obama says about an unemployment level of 7.8%. It's disaster. It's, it's a catastrophe. That's what he said when he took office. And so we're here, and all of a sudden, we're happy to be at 7.8% unemployment. And I do think that there's something suspicious with these numbers. We're not losing and I think, I think, I think, jobs a month. I think one, of the, one of the important things to look at in these numbers is to look at the unemployment rates around the 20 to 24 age cohort. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm at least in that cohort, but uh, the uh, unemployment rates jumped the largest increase in uh, the month of September since 1983. So that's telling me that either they're not going back to school or they're taking part-time jobs, and most of them are part-time jobs. Or they are. You know, you can pick and choose when you want to be a conspiracy theorist here, really. Uh, why wouldn't the administration cook the books before the midterms? Why wouldn't the administration try and cook the books a around building, 10 percent when the unemployment is at 10 percent? Look, uh, just today, the Daily Caller has an article up saying uh, the CBO is predicted or uh, confirms that we've had trillion-dollar deficits the last four years. Should we trust the CBO numbers now? It's like they conveniently pick and choose. There doesn't need to, the job truthers, they don't need to exist. I, I, I agree with Essie. I mean, optically, this looks good politically for the president. It's below 8%. It kind of takes, disarms the Republicans who say 44 straight months of unemployment above 8%. But really, the numbers still suck. I mean, uh, yeah. you've got U6, uh, which is still above 14%. These are all low wage jobs, but this isn't because of. Barack Obama. I mean, this well, is 30 I mean, years in the making there. here. And don't forget well, it's also... It's pretty naive to think that this just suddenly happened in four years, that we are in this collapsing economy. Right. There's no jobs truthers on this panel right now. It's disingenuous to say that these job numbers are so disastrous or, the, or that the president cooked the books on these. The job numbers are fairly clear. But the thing is, is that if you look at Obama's mindset between 2008 Obama and 2012 Obama, this was the 2008 Obama was declaring that we needed to have a major stimulus to recover the economy when we have the exact same numbers now and he's not doing the same thing so why is it that if we need our economy needed a major stimulus then that we don't necessarily need a major stimulus now okay I, you're saying so we, hang on just a second you're saying we had the exact same numbers let's let's put these numbers back up these don't look to me like the exact same numbers the, the beginning in the blue is when Obama came into office the red is the end of the Bush administration and and when they started kicking up in that third month that's when the stimulus happened and everything here is since the stimulus these do not look to me like the same numbers. Right, from WhatHouse.gov. <laughs> <right? laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd also these, point out that there are two BLS, there are two Bureau of Labor anywhere. Statistics exactly. economists who have been who have donated to the Obama campaign. When it's about it's not, it's not, it's not oh a non-partisan. Oh my God! You mean you've it's got people who have a job who are actually donating to political campaigns? When it's about job creation, oh, no, we have to. how many government employees are donating yeah, to Barack exactly. Obama? And remember, the federal unemployment rate is around three or four percent, so they're not really hurting that badly for a job. And six hundred thousand of the 800,000 job increase, job, like new jobs right. from this period. So when it's public jobs. When it's about they, they, job this is creation, more government. When it's about job creation, we'll question the numbers. When it's about debt and deficits, the numbers are, are just you, fine, right? Do you guys right. disagree look, with this look, unprecedented as as, $16 trillion debt and a $1 trillion a year deficit? Are we disagreeing on that? I thought we were pretty well settled. As far as what Austin was saying, the president's not proposing a stimulus package. I mean, he, he has proposed it. They're fairly modest. The American Jobs Act is a fairly modest thing. That's the bare minimum of what can be done. You have the Progressive Caucus coming out with, uh, you know, a Green New Deal. You have. Uh, presidential candidates running on Green New Deal, massive investments. We still need major government involvement. Like the stimulus. In, that did so, so much wonderful I mean, it stuff, did right? something. It yeah, didn't yeah. do near well, enough, if, though. If they didn't do anything, then why would we want to do it again? It, so if, why look, would you look, look at the chart behind stimulus. you. It clearly did something. It didn't do enough. It got us right back where we were. The stock market, and that's because we've inflated. 
they were going down until the stimulus. They, they, is that they a coincidence? Were losing more and I mean, more neither, and more neither jobs. Wall Street or Main Street is going to suddenly believe that things are better in the Obama economy just because some economist at the Bureau of Labor Statistics tells them. Right, so. and after that debate I performance it's, it's the other night, he pretty, hasn't convinced anybody that he knows anything about the. Economy. Well, I, I don't disagree with you on that, but the 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 point is that this act, you know, that the stimulus did work. I, we we didn't go into the Great Depression up until the stimulus was put into place. We were following Herbert Hoover's policies, yeah, the stimulus and we got paid somebody and we would have right? gotten three years of Hoover, Herbert Hoover <laughs> if if and, you'd had John McCain as president. And I'd like looking at that chart. Is that a coincidence? Right, when the job losses stop, every stopped. time that you stimulate, you have to destroy a job. You have to take a job by the that's private nonsense. sector and you create a government that's job. That's absolutely There's nonsense. that which is seen, and then there's that, that which is unseen. No, if you decide that you're going to build, if you decide that you're going to build a lodge at Yosemite, you're not taking out a private job. Yeah, it is because because you're taking a job from a private worker. If I'm going to create, if I have to pay more in taxes. I'm on a hire less workers if I'm oh, a private sector. Every so. time you that's create that's a that's teacher, that's you lose a uh, Walmart worker. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> why do you, you know, in, in magic What's conservative land. land. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why okay, you, let's, let's move along to Romney's tax plans. Just as we suspected, the Romney campaign is employing the etch-a-sketch strategy. Here was Romney surrogate Congressman Phil Gingry explaining how Romney is now changing his positions from the Republican primary to look like a moderate in the general election and appeal to moderate voters. The Republican, the conservative candidate in the primary is always going to lean right and, and come back to the center for the general, the opposite for the Democrat. Uh, that's all you're seeing here. It's, it's very typical. We strong conservatives understand that. Uh, there are a lot of uh, undecideds in this country uh, that are hopefully right of center, not left of center, but we want those votes too. So this is campaign strategy. And we saw in the debate Romney run away from his very own tax plan. I'm not in favor of a $5 trillion tax cut. That's not my plan. My plan is not to put in place any tax cut that will add to the deficit. That's point one. So you may keep referring to it as a $5 trillion tax cut, but that's not my plan. Okay, simple fact. We take in about $2 trillion a year in taxes. It was $1.92 last trillion last year. It'll be a little over $2 trillion this year. Inflation, the economy grows. Over 10 years, that's $20 trillion, right? We're all with it on the arithmetic here. Figure in inflation and a growing economy over a 10-year period, it's really going to be about $25 trillion. Mitt Romney wants to chop 20% off that. What's 20% of 25? Five. How can Mitt Romney stand there and say to all of America, I'm not in favor of a $5 trillion tax cut, when he just spent a year running around saying, I want a 20% across the board tax cut, all taxes. That's $5 trillion. This math is indisputable, Austin. Uh, well, no, you're going to have to let the conservative defend Mitt Romney here because... Uh, I reject your premise that he's trying to raise attack, or cut taxes by $5 trillion. He First just, of all, Obama's, he, Obama's claim was based on a study... Or, no, the claim was based on a study by the Tax Policy Center. I'm not quoting any, they, any claim, and I'm not quoting Obama. Obama's, I'm quoting the actual Obama's numbers. Claim, Obama's claim. Obama's claim about a $5 trillion tax cut came from a tax policy center study that in the abstract will tell Forget you the that tax they, policy they ignore... Are you denying that we're, that we're collecting $2 trillion a year in taxes right now? No, I'm saying... Okay, I'm are saying you denying Romney that 2 times 10 is 20? Plan. Romney was not he running, running away plan. from his tax plan. But what are you guys both so worried about? Both candidates are going to grow government anyway. You're oh. just going to get a slight decrease in spending from a, a Romney presidency. Obama you both should be happy. Strong, Liberals or conservatives should all be very happy with the growth would, of government. I would be. Because, because anybody who cares about liberty or freedom or free market they're screwed. Anybody who is a, a working poor, people None of us care about wages. liberty or freedom over Absolutely here. Absolutely not. Uh, we, we don't care about liberty or freedom. This is about us. Liberty is terrible. This is about us versus We've got to have liberty for the Koch brothers. I get it. You know, we've got to deregulate their oil plants and their, and their, and their paper mills and things. Yeah. Let them poison more yeah, people. I'm not Let in the, that you know, Koch conspiracy, yeah, I'm, you know, whatever I, that has to do with, Tom. You know, it's, no, it's, I know. I understand what deregulation is code for. It's not surprising at all that Romney is running away from the positions he took in the Republican primary because the Republican Party has been completely co-opted by, by Wall Street, by billionaires. Part of the, parts of the Democratic Party have too. I'm not going to apologize for them too. But, you know, they, they have to uh, pledge themselves to never ending war. They have to pledge themselves Absolutely. to their eccentric billionaire donors like right. Foster Freeze. Right. Right. We think that Advil is a good, uh, between the knees is a good right. uh, But we're going to get that no matter what. The Whichever, surge in Afghanistan, no that was Obama's never ending war. No matter which candidate wins, we lose, ladies and gentlemen. Whether if you're for limited government or if you're for, if you're anti-war. Yeah, so I, 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 I got it. The, you're not going to be happy until there is no government. The thing that, that the founders fought and died for to hell with Don't all that. Don't get too excited, Tom. I mean, I was inspired by Mitt Romney's performance. 
it, I was even okay. more inspired by so, uh, the last so one of Obama's. How is the Mitt Romney that we saw? You know, I, I mean, this, what, is, this is what's going on right now. The Mitt I, Romney we saw on TV a couple of nights ago is completely different than the Mitt Romney who was, you know, trashing Newt Gingrich just six months ago. I think that an etch sketch could have done a better job than Obama did. <laughs> I'm talking about Romney. How, how do, yeah, how do you guys feel very comfortable? Well defined, how, very can a conservative, how can a conservative be supportive of a guy who started out as a moderate or a, even a liberal, arguably, then became a severe conservative and now has become a moderate again? I'll tell you This why, is a guy who will say anything to win. More, that, that's more what I'm liking about, about him. him. That's more, what I'm liking right. about him. I don't. I, I think I'm. I'm, well, that's, I'm I not think trusting that he's going to do what he's going to say. Uh, as long as it's working, crowd, he will be in favor of same-sex marriage, and then you'll still oh, support no, him. Oh no, that's that's Obama, and he also likes to take on a southern drawl when he's speaking in front of uh, predominantly black audiences. Well, Scalia another, came out. Very Scalia came out today and said that that laws against sodomy, laws against gay sex. Are you know we're we're law in the United States for 200 years? That's a no-brainer. Of course, you know that's not unconstitutional. In other words, forget forget about gay marriage. If you happen to be gay and have sex with somebody in Scalia land, you go to prison for the rest of your life or for a good long time. And if we get Romney, we're going to get more Scalias. Is that is that really? No, if we get more Obamas, we're going to get more Scalias. You understand? No, you're not. No, yes, if you get more absolutely. Obamas, you're going to get more Elena Kagan. This is not, and this not an issue right, right now. For sodomy, how many how many people have been actually arrested in jail for sodomy? The Supreme Court struck it's a, down that law in, in, in Texas, but but if you but get who's in jail for it, for sodomy? No one. If I mean, you well, what? actually, there probably still are people from the old leftover laws. But if you get more Scalia's, you are going to see that happen. Oh, he Scalia's. proclaimed it today. It has nothing to do with sodomy. Clarence Thomas's less Scalia's, more Clarence Thomas's for me oh, for this guy right here, oh, this libertarian. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get, oh. you're gonna get I know, exactly. I'm yeah, sorry. I just make my I can't head take explode. either side in this debate because if you've got Obama or you have Romney, no matter what, you're going to have a growth in government. And liberties are, liberty, as government expands, that, liberty contracts. Yeah, the simple well, fact of the matter is that if you look over the last 60, 70 years and you aggregate Republican administrations and Democratic administrations, You've had GDP growth far more substantial in Democratic administrations than in Republican mm -hmm. administrations. I mean, population. I mean, it's a grow. simple fact of the matter. You also have to choose. grow. Also have Economies to choose. grow. Government has to grow in proportion if it's going to do its job. But the, so there, there has to. This I'm fallacy, not talking about the growth of the government. I'm talking about the growth they, of the, the, conservative, the, the conservative, conservative ethos is laid bare right here. They are for the growth in government as well. No, there saying, really is only two sides to this debate. There is the individual versus the collective. And so you see right now what a joke it is. These debates that we're having in this country right now, because no. Matter matter who think, wins. Are you, are you, are the, you asserting that there is no such thing as society, that society is merely a collection of that's individuals? That's correct, because the problem that's, is, that no, is such no, nonsense. socialists, conser such they, they confuse the distinction between government and society. That's like saying there's you no such say, thing as a city, no, it's just a collection just of houses. Just because I don't want government education doesn't mean that I don't want education. Just because I don't, there's, just there's because no I want such thing as society. Water, doesn't mean that, doesn't no, mean that I want the government saying, to run water. There is a confusion of distinction. Socialists confuse that. Wait a minute. You're saying that if there there is no society, there's merely a collection of individuals, then there's no cities. There's merely a collection of houses. That's right? correct. They, okay. Well, you're All saying right. you're missing Got the force okay. of the trees. More on tonight's big picture rumble after the break. Welcome back to the Big Picture Rumble. Joining me are Austin Peterson, Director of Production of FreedomWorks, S.E. Robinson, Deputy Director of the Paul Revere Project, and Sam Sachs, Progressive Writer and Commentator. Let's get back to it. The next presidential debate is going to be focused on national security already. The Obama administration is running ads, or somebody on, on their side is running ads against Romney, questioning whether or not he's ready to be commander-in-chief. Take a look. This is Mitt Romney grasping after straws. Uh, Mitt Romney today didn't really have anything to say about Syria. He gave very little detail on how he would change U.S. foreign policy. Incompetent. His remarks about Afghanistan have been utterly confusing. Because you didn't mention U.S. troops and the war in Afghanistan in your nomination acceptance speech. When you give a speech, you don't go through a laundry list. You talk about the things that uh, you think are important. Think are important. Are, important. are you yeah. saying the troops aren't important to you? Our national security is not important. There's nothing. 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 More important to me than keeping our country safe. Safe. I served as a corporal. I was a captain, infantry officer, captain in the United States Army. United States Marine Corps. Do you have any idea how dangerous this world is? You don't seem to have a plan, Mr. Romney. You've shown us from London to Libya that you're in over your head. That's what scares me most. For you, Mr. Romney, it's about politics. For us, it's about defending our country. Defending our freedom. We deserve a commander in chief that understands what's at stake. But to trust you as commander in chief? I don't think so. I don't think so. As a veteran, I don't think so. So I, I think it's particularly interesting that this is not coming from the Obama campaign, but from the Truman Project. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the Obama campaign coming against Mitt Romney. Sam, what are your thoughts on how they're going, to, how this is going to play? Well, out I think to the majority of the electorate, I think 
President Obama is probably going to win this debate. I mean, he can come out and he can tout that he's ended the Iraq war. He can tout that he's ending Afghanistan. He can tout he killed bin Laden. Of course, to his far left base, to people like me, um, there's also the drone wars that he's going to be touting. There's going to be all the stuff that his far left base is pretty you think freaking angry about. You think I mean, he probably tout won't tout drone, drone wars, but okay. they know that exists. He might mention the strikes he's he's uh, taken out uh, Al Qaeda's top leaders, and we'll know what that means. Twenty um, and thirty-two. You know, we talk about undecided voters. I think there's a lot of undecided voters on the left who are figuring out whether or not they're going to vote for Jill Stein or or or, or Barack Obama when it comes to maybe Trump. Chomsky came out the other day and said if he lived in a swing state, he'd he'd, he'd do a self-defense vote for. Yeah. For Barack Obama, no, which is uh, libertarians you know, like me are so say. excited for a Mitt Romney presidency, and the only reason we're really excited for it is because, because the anti off the country. No, because the anti-war left will finally come out of the woodwork. We'll actually see Code Pink starting to speak out again. Oh, yeah, have a war, war in Iran, right? Well, actually, all the all the um, the pot activists are going to come out, and then they're going to find their principles again. But if you well, really, but if you really look at it, what's going to be right what's now. the major difference between the foreign policy of Barack Obama and Mitt Romney? Please, <laughs> liberals, tell me. Well, I don't know. I don't have any idea what Mitt Romney's foreign really? policy is, so and that's the problem. I can guarantee you the extrajudicial. Extrajudicial killings are going to continue. That the assassinations of American citizens without uh, without due process are going to continue, and you're going to get the status quo. So right, any, Austin, any but let's, let's be clear about, about what these wars are. Has to answer to Obama's Obama. record. Let's wars. be let's be clear about what these wars are. These are corporate wars. These are wars that are being fought by corporations that would rule in your in your you view of the world. The, the mercantilism these are for that oil Tom, companies. That these are for right. defense it's contractors. The it's the, it's the Hamiltonian mercantilism that Tom Hartman has said that he supports on this War is profitable. Right, That's exactly. where the free market right. will so take the us. government has to step in and make sure that we keep our shipping lanes open. We don't right? have a government. We've got to keep oil we flowing have a in the United States. That is, that is not right. a person, but that's installed by the government. Right? That, we have it installed by no. the state. Take it that over. is not mercantilism. <laughs> SE. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we can't treat Mitt Romney like he's been president for the last four years. Obama has been president. And that's the person that's in charge of foreign policy, and he has withdrawn from Iraq. Oh, yeah, great. But it's less stable and closer to just so being a tinderbox than ever before. Afghanistan, Afghanistan, where Obama led, uh, you know, 20,000 plus strong surge in there and then pulled it back. That was a totally wrong straw. He, he, why would a Democrat come in here? Why would you even be trying to defend his policy I'm in Afghanistan? Not defending his policy. He sent in a surge that just was demonstrably not the right way to deal with a tribal so situation. So what was the like right way to deal with it? And, and a, a, a smaller, right a smaller more restrained presence because it doesn't leave so large a cultural So footprint. why not make such what, a small no, presence no, that we're say, not there? No, 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 you said contracts coming in and trying to make Americanized Let version of Sesame, Sesame, Sesame Street. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what a libertarian would do to protect the United States. The Constitution <laughs> has a specific policy <laughs> for dealing with terrorists, and it's called letters of mark and reprisal. And you put a bounty on the head, and you say that any, if you harm any civilian in this strike, you will be held accountable. Instead, we have a drone war that kills civilians and it causes more terrorists down the line. But if we so use you, these constitutional you would use letters the marketplace. of marketplace. Yeah, you damn right I would. Absolutely. I would use the marketplace to start to stop terrorism and I would also make it so that no civilians could ever be harmed. But now we cause more West. terrorists I mean, it, by the war and, that and Obama so then, wages then, right now. So by then you get civilians. vigilantes running around no, with, with guns and one they're of, held under one the of them these comes after you and says, you know, no. hey, I can make a million bucks no, if I take out a guy who looks like this guy. They are held liable under the law. Wrong guy. Absolutely not. They are held liable under the law, anyone who is under the constitutional letter of remark who harms anyone Austin that is, is not the named and, and, and the wrong people were never it is, killed. Absolutely. So never the free market just naturally guide us to some profitable war on terror? You're, this is just such a joke, Sam, because you say that you're against this drone war right now, and you're just so totally disingenuous. If you really this care, is the question. You that really happen care about the free market, the the we just, you would look at these issues. You, there we, are we just have 10 seconds care. left. SC, what is Romney's foreign policy? Romney's foreign policy is to create a, create a Reagan economic zone that would, much like the Millennium Challenge Corporation, so would, lead, would, lead other nations, <laughs> would lead other nations to become responsible international actors by luring them with the benefits of free trade and uh, the ideas that have made America great the last two hundred years. Oh, two, two words, two words. It's, <laughs> here's, here's his foreign policy. Status quo. All right. Video from Wednesday night's debate has been circulating on the internet and it appears to show Mitt Romney putting something on the podium at the beginning of the debate. While a Romney spokeswoman has said it was just a handkerchief that he was like sneaking out and dropping down there, much of the social media world is wondering if the mysterious object is a set of notes, maybe even stashed in a napkin, which would mean that Romney cheated. So what do you think? Is Romney a cheater? Here at the at the end of this video, he goes back and he grabs the paper and sticks it in his pocket. And so I mean, I would if it was me. They gave the Allies the maps of France on a little pe on a little handkerchief when so they you cheated. If you could. So, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, see, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. But yeah. what I'm going to say is this: well, for the people, for the people, who, for the people who actually believe that he was cheating, I think it's a tremendous insult to Barack Obama that he could lose that spectacularly all because he had you know a little little piece of paper. Agreed. Right. Well, he did wipe his nose with it. 
it, so it might have been a handkerchief. It could have had notes with it, but he also went and was shaking everybody's hand after like using it. He should have been fist bumping people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. agree on yes, that. hand sanitizer. Austin, SE, Sam, thank you all for being with us. Thanks, Thanks all. Thank you.